and the five three bench? Um, I'll start with the five three bench. I think the like I've mentioned before, I think if it's a, a eight zero seven one six two five three, I think it's um, it's probably falls under team selection. Uh, so obviously we selected a team irrespective of the bench uh, numbers that we selected, uh, that we think uh, will give us the best opportunity to, to get a victory on, on Sunday. Um, uh, the other one was uh, between Kubis and yeah, Kubis uh, and Faf. I think if we selected Faf or if we selected Kubis, I don't think a lot of people was, would have raised a lot of eyebrows, you know. Uh, obviously, uh, the French have got a, uh, a very interesting uh, kicking game. Uh, that 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 they um, that they use and and we feel using those two guys will probably give us the best uh, um, uh, opportunity uh, on Sunday and then with Dwayne yeah again for this specific game we feel uh, Dwayne is a guy that that will, will probably uh, uh, that we will need uh, but it doesn't at all mean that 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 uh, Jasper won't play in the semi final so it is uh, just purely the the team selection is. Uh, based on uh, the team that we feel we need to get a, a, a victory on Sunday. Jacques and the Koenig, obviously. Um, you touched on it uh, around Twain and, and Kobus, but the, the, the halfback combination, uh, Kobus and uh, Mani, and then obviously on the bench, Faf and, and Andre, uh, would you talk to us about that? Uh, is it combinations or... Are they there as individuals? No, I think uh, if you if you look at a guy like Kubis, I think he's playing exceptional rugby uh, um, and and Fof, uh, for, uh, for that matter. Uh, and, and the same with uh, with Marnie. I think Marnie and and, and uh, Andre is probably a little bit uh, different in the sense that I think if you look at the cumulative numbers, a number of minutes that that Andre have been playing. Uh, for us, uh, or rugby this year is probably one game if you if you count all the the minutes together. So uh, we we slow, slowly building him up after his injury, uh, and I think with Marnie, I think Marnie is uh, uh, probably our informed fly off uh, at this stage. Not probably is, you know. I think uh, 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 Marnie started for us. Uh, I think we lost one game uh, this year with Marnie starting at ten. So obviously he's. Uh, He's in form and, and the team performs when he's, he's the starting fly-off. So uh, it's just as simple as that. Oh, Skipper Percival Young here from ENSA. Skipper, can I ask, sir, can I ask you, um, 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 Jacques Minerva has, has been talking about this tournament since the very first start, that every single match is a knockout match. Just talk to us about the occasions, though, sir. This is a massive match. It's 23 players against an entire nation. Is that how you see it? And Jacques, can I ask you, though, are you guys preparing yourselves to be here next week again? Um, yeah, of course, it's a big game. We all know that. Um, I think we've experienced playing against a, a home nation before in Japan. And, yeah, it's, it is difficult. And it's, but th that's, those are the games that you want to play in. That's where you get tested the most, you know. But I think we find strength in each other. And we always know that we have um, over 65 million um, backing us from people back at home who will be watching and supporting. So all we do, um, no matter how loud it is out there, because we played last day in Marseille and the atmosphere was, was amazing. It was great, for obviously, for them. But all you do there is just zone in on the job that you got to do in hand. If you think too much about what's happening around you, it's going to take you, of course, of what you have to do. Our main focus is to make sure that we deliver what we plan um, on the week and make plans as we go along. Now, uh, your question regarding are we uh, preparing to be here next week? Now, obviously, since we started in 2020, that was our, our aim was to win the World Cup. I mean, uh, otherwise, what, why, why are you even in 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 it? No. So, now, Percy, no, definitely, um, uh, our aim was always to do that, and uh, we are preparing and giving it a, a, a best shot. We know since the draw was out that the quarterfinals is probably going to boil down to France and, and New Zealand. It's going to be one of those two teams. It's always going to be a big game. doesn't matter which team you play in the quarterfinal when it's France at, uh, who's playing at home or if it's uh, New Zealand. I mean, it will be a tough quarterfinal. I think uh, the same for Ireland and New Zealand. It's going to be a tough quarterfinal. And that's how quarterfinals will be, you know. All the quarterfinals, I think, will be will be really close uh, and cl closely contested. And I think all all the teams are preparing to be uh, in the semi-final and to go on from there. 
Hello, uh, Sia, you will be in front of Charles Olivon. Can you tell us something about him and about the third lines of French? Uh, they said they are ready for a game physicality with brutality. Um, you're talking about Charles? Yeah, no, he's good. good. Um, he's a really, uh, an amazing player. He's, he's a great link between the, the backs and the forwards, very skillful. And um, he's obviously he's a good leader too. Um, you know, he's led in, 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 in Toulon and also obviously the French team as well. And yeah, he's, 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 a, he's, he's a big player for them. And the, yeah, I know they preparing for a physical battle. And I mean, we don't hide who we are and what we do. And that's who we are. And we, it's nothing new for us. It's not, we don't have to think, do anything different. That's what we are driven by. That's what we work on is hard work and physicality. And that's exactly the DNA of our game. So it's going to be nothing new for us. But we, the, the main thing is just to bring it on Saturday and bring it for 80 minutes. And I think we've had a couple of, of, of challenges like that, that came like Tonga, which was brutal. You know, for 80 minutes, we had to work for our points. I think the game against um, Ireland too uh, was also that. So we've had a little bit of preparation. So yeah, this weekend is never going to be any different. We know they can be physical too. It's all about who's going to last for 80 minutes during, doing that. Question for us here. Uh, could you describe us the, the feeling when we arrive at this stage? Uh, what things change when you arrive in the quarterfinal? As a defending champions, you have the, this experience to, to continue until the end. Could you explain us? Yeah, no, I think our coaching staff has been amazing in prep long before the World Cup. You know, they plan for different scenarios. So whenever we get to the stage, you know, they would have kind of prepared us to, to, to where we need to go. But I think as folk, as, as players, not a lot changes. Our, our, the way we prepare doesn't change, but it, it's the same as in our pool games. If we didn't win against Tonga, we wouldn't be here today. So it's always good um, to feel that kind of pressure before. And a lot of this team has been here before. So we have no excuse because we, uh, I think 90% of our team played in the last World Cup. So there's no excuse. We can't be making excuses and say, oh, it's a big game. We haven't been here before. We know what it feels like and we've been here before. So we we'll draw, uh, we'll draw a lot of confidence from that. And also confident with the guys that haven't been here before won't have to wonder because they've got people next to them who've been here and stood this challenge before. So yeah, we, we walk in confidently, but we also know it's a game that France is also confident. They have their own things, advantage and they start being at home and everything. So it's going to be a proper battle. Um, good, good morning, Sia. Good morning, Jacques. Um, Jacques, um, just take us through the omissions of Lucania Ame and Trevor. Like, how difficult were those decisions? And then with Mane in particular, um, are you expecting him to come to the part with the goal kicking in the same way he did um, in the playoff stages in the URC, which he's done successfully over the past two seasons? Now, in terms of uh, uh, your question regarding uh, Lucanio and, uh, and Trevor, yes, uh, I think the whole team selection uh, was quite tough. Uh, I think if you look at the squad, if you look at the, the way we, we manage the load um, of, of our squad uh, over the, 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 the last couple of uh, games, over the 10, 10 games, 10 test matches that we've played this season, I think uh, the, the majority of our group is between four to, to six games of game exposure. We always said that the World Cup is a long competition if you look at it. Uh, I know it's seven games, but it's spread over uh, 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 two months, basically. So uh, I think managing a squad um, to make sure that they go into the knockout stages as fresh as possible, that's, the, that's what you want to achieve on the one side, but you can only do that while winning. You must all, all, all also get victories to get to the knockout stages. So I think, and, and that's the, probably the beauty of our squad. You know, we, we had the ability to, to rotate and to rest and to manage the load of the players, but also to get us in this position. Uh, and uh, hopefully that will, will carry us through. So again, uh, um, if we would have gone with, uh, with Trevor above Vince, or if you were, were, were gone with, with uh, 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 Lucanio above Jesse, I think Luki may be a little bit different. He's, uh, he, obviously, he's, he's, he didn't have a lot of exposure over the last uh, uh, two to three months due to his injury. But I must say, he looks good in training. And uh, um, yeah, both of them, like I mentioned, the same question was asked about Dwayne and Jasper. There's no reason why they, they might not get selected in a semi-final. You know, we, we believe that the squad that we selected is a squad that will match the strengths or, or, uh, 
and maybe have the ability to exploit the weaknesses of France. Uh, there is not a lot, like uh, uh, when you get to knockouts and, and you look at all the teams, there's not a lot of weaknesses in them. Uh, and uh, then uh, in terms of Mahani in the goal kicking, yeah, I think if you look at uh, just the last game against Tonga, I, I, I mean, I know everybody says, yeah, Andre came back and he, he kicked 100%, but I think, Ma not I think, I know Mahani also kicked 100%. So, so obviously, yeah, any kicker on a day, like a hooker on a day, can have, a, can have an off day. Um, what I can tell you is that uh, um, when you play in a knockout, you're not going to get a lot of opportunities uh, and you have to take those opportunities. It, it might be try scoring opportunities zero to five meters from the try line. It might be points off the tee. So uh, when we get opportunities, we must use them. Yeah, yeah. Morning. Um, Morning. France have been throwing out words like physical, brutal. They're going to hurt you. Our players were lining up for concussion protocols after Marseille. Do you feel your job of managing the referee is going to be you know, much more crucial tomorrow on Sunday than, than normal? I think... The performance is going to be more crucial than anything else. Um, you can't um, focus. The thing is, if you disciplined like we have been, I think we're the only team that didn't give a card this tournament. And we do play physical, we do play on the edge, but we train it over and over again. We train to tackle below, below, below the waist. At trainings, the penalties are called offsides and all those kind of things. So our training is like a match, match day. And if you cause those penalties at training, then you obviously bring in the ref. Our goal is not to uh, bring the ref into in. That's why our technique is so important. But at the same time, you can't go out there in fear. We can't go out there in fear of, of doing something crazy. You have to live on the edge because that's what our game is. That's who we are, the South African team, is to play as hard as you can for 80 minutes. And that's rugby. People enjoy rugby because it's brutal. And also it's got um, guys who can use their footwork and everything. It's beautiful. So... Our forward pack is, is that, that's what we need to do to go forward, to be as brutal as we can. And then we want to um, set like a, a go, um, go forward ball so that our wings and our backs can do their thing. But I think the ref will be able to manage the game. And obviously, if we stay clear of anything naughty, uh, we'll, we'll be all right. Good morning, gents. A uh, question for Jacques. Uh, when you planned your season earlier this year, would have, you would have had a fair idea of who you wanted in your 23 for this weekend. How close are you in terms of what you've put out or, or, or play on Sunday? And then also, how does the tournament um, shape your convictions around um, who should be playing in the knockout stages of this tournament? Yeah, I think uh, it, it, it would probably, the, the team we selected for the quarterfinal, would, a big factor in that is who do you play? Um, and and uh, you, we select a team, we look at the opposition, like I mentioned, and you analyze the opposition and uh, then you you look at uh, your players, where their form is, and uh, then you make a decision on that. So a lot of things influence, uh, obviously, selection. Uh, and uh, but but if you just purely look at it from a rugby point of view, you look at your performances and your players' performances in training, in games, and you look at the opposition's performances, and then you select. Uh, uh, those are two factors that will influence selection. So I, I wouldn't say that uh, I, I would say the, the bulk of the, the team we selected, we probably would have selected for, for New Zealand as well, but we probably would have gone from a, 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 a strategic point of view. There might have been subtle changes within the team. So uh, the, the team that you play against definitely has an influence on, on, on your team selection. Hi, Jack. Obviously, the top four ranked teams are all playing each other in Paris this weekend. How exciting is that? from a showpiece perspective in terms of showcasing the game and 80,000 people at both, uh, both quarterfinals in Paris and yeah. how closely matched are those four teams in your opinion? Yeah, yes, I think that is, uh, it, it's going to be two massive games. Uh, like I said, uh, we, uh, we, it, we, in the build up to the quarterfinal, I mean, the big question was always, listen, uh, or it came up uh, numerous times in, uh, in press conferences, who, who would you pick? And I don't think there's an easy one. You know, they, uh, um, if you look at the last couple of performances of New Zealand uh, and uh, their performance against Italy, which is a top team, you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be it's going to be a tough game on that side as well. Uh, uh, Ireland's also on form. New Zealand's on form. We on form. Uh, France is on form. 
so I think it's going to be two um, humdinger of uh, of games, uh, and 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 I believe the others also. You know, um, obviously they are probably not that high ranked in the world rugby currently, but world rankings and world rugby uh, in in a World Cup, I, I don't think a lot. We don't look at that a lot, uh, but the teams that are playing each other in Paris this weekend are, are four teams that's that's pretty much on form, and it's going to be tight. Like I said, I think it's going to boil boil down to to execution on the day and taking opportunities on the day. A uh, question for Coach uh, Jack, please. Um, Jack, by going to five three, do, do you not slightly risk? losing your identity or, or the, the, the sort of fear that you might bring to an opposition or kind of your aura, if you like? Yeah, again, uh, like I mentioned, first of all, um, I know people look at the bench because we sometimes play around with the seven one six two five three. Uh, and again, I'm taking it back to team selection. You look at your position and, and, and you kind of make a decision on, listen, what do we think is the best... Uh, team of 23 that we select and sometimes that's a 7-1 might be a 8-0 in the next game it might be a 6-2 it might be a 5-3 again uh, um, but for for this specific game we we felt that that uh, a 5-3 is the best uh, for us and like I've mentioned before but in terms of us losing our identity now I think um, when we went 7-1 everybody said there's risk yes with every team selection, doesn't matter how you select that bench, there's a risk. I think 5-3 is probably the stand, more standard one that people perceive has got less risk. Uh, the, and then if you go to a 6-2, obviously there's a little bit of more risk. And then 7-1, there's, there's more risk. But you do mitigate that risk with, with uh, multiple players being able to cover multiple positions. So we just felt that for this specific game, um, a 5-3 is probably the best one for us. And and if you look, um, I, I know people will probably look at it and say, like you mentioned, are we going away from our identity? But if I take you back, the, the last game, the last big final we played in was the British and Irish Lions final. Uh, and we went with a 5-3 split there. Uh, and Morna Stein was selected, you know, and he kicked the last penalty uh, to give us the victory in that test match, in that uh, series. So, so it's not like we haven't done five threes in big games before. Uh, it's, it's, it's not. It may be uh, pe people don't follow us that often. So it might in the World Cup because we haven't done it a lot. Uh, people might have uh, might see it as as strange. But we have definitely played big final games with uh, with five threes before. Uh, Jacques, over here, can I ask you, you've talked a little bit about what you expect from the French, but can I ask you to expand a bit on what game you expect from them? Uh, give us a bit of a crash course. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, there's not a lot of um, weaknesses in the French side. Uh, and in all, all, all four teams that's playing this weekend, uh, the one thing that's probably a, a little bit different uh, uh, of the French side is, is their kicking game. Uh, and I think they, uh, even in in one of the press conferences, they made no bones about it that they they prefer not to play with the ball. You know, they they pressurize you, uh, give you the ball, and then try and suffocate you with their defense, which which is a very good defensive system from Sean uh, into making errors. You know, so you have to find strategies around that. And and uh, and and again, if you look at team selection and the way we went, we probably uh, have to talk to that uh, with our team selection. So, um, yeah, so, and then obviously they've got a good set piece. Um, if you look at the, the, the set pieces, they, they kind of win their ball. Uh, and uh, then they've got uh, some X factor. Uh, so I think all around, they, they, they are well-rounded team uh, that, that, um, that puts teams under pressure, you know, uh, like they did with New Zealand. They they a team that don't give up and and uh, they play for 80 minutes. So from our side, you, we have to match that, like Sia mentioned. Morning, Jock. Morning. Um, just a question for you: How much? What or what does it say for your team selection that you are able to change your back pairing to the one that won you the World Cup in 2019? I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the, the, the big thing there is probably the injury to Andre. I mean, Andre has been out for 20 weeks 
or 19 weeks before he joined us. And that was unfortunate. Uh, if he didn't get injured, it probably would have looked a little bit different. I can't say, uh, but it probably would have. Uh, uh, because he's a good, he's a quality rugby player, and and the moment he was fit, we drafted him in the squad. So if he wasn't injured, he probably would have been in the World Cup squad from the start, uh, and and that's probably the main reason uh, why why we changed the halfback pairing to the one that won us the World Cup. And like I said, I, uh, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think uh, Moni started eight games or seven games for us uh, this year, and and we won six out of those those seven games or seven out of the eight games that he started. I I think uh, if, if you just look at the way he drives the team and uh, uh, he's, he's obviously on form uh, in terms of that, I think uh, the, the point difference in the, 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 the games that he started for us at 10, uh, it, it's like four tries to one, you know, so we, 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 we score obviously points with, with Marnie at 10 and, and not saying that Andre just Andre hasn't been there due to injury. So yeah, that's the, that. Like I said, we selected uh, Marnie. Marnie is our is in form. He's playing good rugby. Gubbs is in form, playing good rugby. Faf is in form, playing good rugby. But it's just looking at at what the French will will bring to us, we probably not probably we feel that this is the best uh, shot for us. Thank you so much. So yeah, can I ask you, I'm stating that obviously you're always reminding us that you guys are in a very privileged position. You know, guys not playing for yourselves. No. I, I need to apologize for being late, but I'm here today, though, sir. I travel with a lot of South Africans and there's a sense of, of anticipation, though, sir. What is your message to those South Africans who made their way to France and those millions who are still at home, though, sir? Um, all I have, well, I think all we have as a team is, is, is gratitude. Um, we are we are honestly blessed to have such a country um, who believes in this team uh, so much and people would um, would use their savings. They would do everything they can to get here today. And and we're thankful for the people that are opening um, screens for people to view in the township, in malls, because I think our team represents the whole of South Africa um, and all represent people from different walks of life. And I think, that's where we get our edge from. Um, of course, we love the game and we want to play for our own personal reasons and goals. But the main thing that brings us together is South Africa. That's who we want to make proud. That's who we want to inspire as a people back at home. And the only way we can do that, not these words, what I'm saying right now, it's the effort that we put in on the field. It's, the, it's what Jack asked me to do on the field, not to give up, not to look like I'm not giving my 100%. I must always be giving everything because so many people would give everything to be where we are today. And and that's what drives us. That's what keeps us going because, you know, some people pay just to win a World Cup for the first time, some people for, for different reasons. But we have, as I said before, what we do on the field and doing what you love has an influence to so many people in the world who could never take that for granted. And that's why we put in the hard work and when we play on, on, on Saturday, our thoughts are always with them. I know there will be a few on, 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 on Saturday, shouting for us, and we 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 are honestly we are honestly grateful, and I don't think we would have um, been where we are without all those hardworking people and those people that are supporting us today. Uh, good morning, Sia. A two-prong question. There's been a very big conversation around Antoine Dupont's availability um, for Sunday's game. Um, do you feel that he may have some unfinished business considering how the effect it was, he was recorded um, in last year's Marseille's test? And then secondly, just to elaborate on Percy's question, how happy are you um, to know that the Bujo squad is here um, for this particular game and they'll bring a piece of South Africa, um, considering that you will be playing in front of what will be a very pro-French crowd? Um, yeah, yeah, we. it's it's always good to see the Bujo squad, um, the energy they're going to bring. And and hopefully they I know they will sing as loud as they can, but obviously it's gonna be different out there. But um it's special to 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 have them, you know, to, to be singing. And like we do in the changing room too, it gets us going. It means like the singing is far deeper to us than just preparing for a game. And it started from when we were child, we were young, but it's good that they're here. And then on Anton, um yeah, it, it is a big thing because he's a big player. He's shown everybody 
uh, respects him around the world. He's, he's, he's shown what he can do and he's, he's important for the French team. He's the leader of the team. So it was always going to be a big thing. And we, we, we as rugby players, we don't wish for one another to be injured. You want to play against the best. You want to see what you can do against the full strength team as, um, as a team. So um, if he's playing and he's back, good for him. We're happy for him. It will be great uh, to be playing against the best strength French side as possible they can put on the field and it's it's good to see players fight and recover from 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 injury so they can be back on the field uh, Jack I should have asked this as a follow-up to to the previous 5-3 question um, it's not just 5-3 but you've made other significant changes to your starting 15 um, uh, the traditional sort of done way of things in World Cups would be a, a team would become more and more consistent throughout a World Cup. So almost you know, or we can guess what a team, what a coach is going to select. And you've done something very different here. Do you, do you think that's kind of the way forward? Does this give you a, a bit of a, a kick that you're doing something different or maybe smarter or maybe people will do this more in the future? Just your, your view on the fact that you've, you've, you've diverted from the norm. Yeah, like I said, we the, the World Cup is actually a long competition. If you, I think, if you go back in 2019, we we basically did the same. Uh, we uh, the the team that in 2019 our first test was against uh, uh, New Zealand. The second one was Namibia. There was lots of changes. We believe that you have to manage the load of your players. Uh, I, I'm not saying that that other teams should do that or not, but that's what we believe. Uh, and we're a little bit different uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. We come out of a rugby championship going into a World Cup, you know. So, uh, like I've mentioned, we had four games in rugby championship, and then we had two warm-up games against Wales and, and against New Zealand. And then you only start with the World Cup. We're now 10 games in our season. So, uh, and like I said, if you look at uh, our squads, we probably we rotated. We did, definitely. And uh, we do that with a specific uh, goal in mind that when we get to this stage of the competition, which is the, 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 the important state of, uh, stage of the World Cup, the knockout stage, that you, you try and manage the load of your players. So, and, and if you look at, at the load spread between our squad, of 33 uh, um, with some of the guys that uh, unfortunately got injured, probably 35 uh, players that we've used. Uh, we're probably in the ballpark figure of the players having played between between four and six games, you know. So they, they uh, except now the, the outliers like Andre who came in late with injury, Lucanio is probably on three games this, this year. So, but again, that's, uh, we we in a different, uh, we, we're in the Southern Hemisphere, which is a little bit different to the Northern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere finished, then they had a time off, and, and then they had their warm-up games building into the World Cup. So they probably have less games played this year uh, uh, after uh, a, a, a sufficient break uh, between the two seasons where we're a little bit different. So I think um, uh, uh, we did the same when we, when we uh, played in... Uh, in the World Cup in 20, 2019, and it worked for us there uh, in terms of managing the squad. So we, we played a team against uh, New Zealand. We had played almost that exact team against uh, Italy in 2019, and then in the quarterfinal, and then we went on onwards. But like I mentioned, uh, uh, again, uh, 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 picking a guy like Duane uh, ahead of Jasper, I think if we pick, selected Jasper, uh, they wouldn't have, people would have said, listen, it's a great team. If we select Dwayne, people are saying it's a great team. So I don't think, uh, it's not to say that this team will go on. I think we're in a fortunate position, if you look at our squad, that there's not a lot of, uh, uh, there's not a lot of difference between the players uh, 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 that we select. There's, uh, there's really the, 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 the step between uh, uh, Vincent Koch and uh, Trevor Niakane and, and uh, um, Franz Malerbe. There's not a big difference between those th uh, players. We're fortunate in that, uh, in that regard. Uh, good morning, Jacques. Good morning, Sia. Uh, Sia, can you maybe just expand a little bit on something that Bongi said yesterday? He said that you guys have been simulating the kind of noise that you could experience against the home crowd at the Stade de France on Sunday evening. Um, the, you guys have been playing some noise. I, I'm not sure if it's fan noise, music, just how you've been mentally preparing to deal with that emotional uh, load that will be in not only the fact it's a knockout game, but also against this crowd. Yeah, we've, I mean... 
if you're gonna prepare, you prepare flat out for everything. But it's as close, it's the closest we could get, you know, just having a speaker around training and um and get some of the noises that normally happens in the game, the crowd, the, like the sounds that they, the the crowd when the songs that they sing. Um, because it's that intense. We remember in Marseille, we couldn't even hear each other, you know. That's the important thing, getting the, the, the comms through. And and we learned from that. If we didn't learn from that, then that 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 game would have been a waste. So it is it is very loud. And the French fans are really passionate and they'll be singing to getting their team going the whole time. And our thing is to zone in and try and find this here the smaller voices amongst each other to 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 help each other out, especially around the set piece calling, the landmark calling. And that's the biggest thing. It was there while we were preparing the whole time so okay. I mean it's not gonna help us do anything um, from the crowd. It's more like the small communication amongst us as a group. And I think, yeah, that's that's how how much the preparation are getting into. That's how important this game is, you know, to make sure that we travel to to try and cover as many bases as we can. And it is difficult to be having a speaker right next to you while somebody is trying to make a call. But hopefully it will help us on Saturday, on Sunday, sorry. Hi, question for Jack. Um, um, can you tell us uh, some words about Fabien Galtier, his progression with the, the French team? What do you think about this, uh, coach? Now, the interesting thing is uh, when, when, I, when myself and Rassi went and coach at Munster, I think Fabien was in Toulon if I'm not mistaken, and then he left Toulon and he came over to Munster and he actually shadowed, he, he, he was in our environment, uh, he and his sports coach was in our environment for two weeks, uh, you know, like, like you do, sometimes you, you go and visit clubs and you spend time with clubs if, they, if you have a little bit of a break in your, in your coaching career. So uh, I got to know him there. Uh, on a personal level, I had a couple of beers with him, played football with him. Uh, um, uh, we had to always be in lunch breaks a football game. Um, yeah, so um, I think he's a he's a class individual. First of all, a good human being. Uh, I really enjoyed him as a person uh, back then. Obviously, we weren't rivals, so it was uh, nice and relaxed. And and uh, he was in all our coaches' meetings in the morning, all our strategy and planning meetings, and he gave good input there. You can see he's a rugby guy, you know. It's not it's not just uh, uh, he, uh, when, he, when we gave opinions or strategies for our next opponent he would he would give his opinion and and we really like that so uh, he, he's willing to share and to so he's just loves rugby like we love rugby um, and then as a coach and coaching against him and his coaching team uh, I think uh, he really puts in a lot of uh, work and they put on you can see uh, if you look at them there's not a lot of weakness within that French side so obviously there's a lot of detail that goes into into uh, um, uh, the team uh, but he, as him as a coach uh, I haven't been in an environment where where he's coached the team so I, I don't know how, how how he does it with 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 his players but great individual he's a rugby man uh, and uh, um, and coaching against his teams that he's the coach of is always it's always a big challenge they, you can see they are well prepared thank, thank you very much um, see you on